Can you perhaps tell us a bit about the dangers and perhaps the pitfalls that companies can get into mm. with the wrong kind of purpose? And more importantly, how can they actually clear away from them? How can they stay as far away as possible? Yeah. Well, you know, I think there are quite a few wrong kinds of purpose, and we cover some of them in, in the book. Um, the most obvious wrong kind of purpose, as far as we're concerned, is where you make profit your prior, primary purpose. Um, and I think a lot of organizations go wrong because they are chasing a growth which is really about trying to uh, return uh, uh, revenue, dividends, whatever it might be, a bit of mostly a financial return to uh, a remote shareholder. Um, I may be wrong, but I think some of the collapses that we've seen recently uh, are really down to those organizations not being led by a strong, outwardly focused customer purpose and more about a race for growth um, to prove to the city or to shareholders that they had a plan for financial growth, economic growth. So um, we always say purpose before profit. Um, and I think uh, if you go into business just saying, I'm here to make a load of money, I, I don't think that is the right kind of purpose for sustainable um, business uh or to, um, to make your ver- all your stakeholders happy. And it means to be also um, very sort of short-term sighted as well. If you're you know, chasing a profit and that's all you're interested in, um, yeah. eventually, you know, what then? What happens after? Yeah, so you just and carry on try, trying to get more It profit. seems to be, like you said, there seems to be a lot of examples of these. And just from the top of my head, I've been thinking a lot of, about them without naming names, obviously. Mm, mm. Um, but uh, this idea of chasing, you know, profits and, and pleasing shareholders and people yeah. who are not necessarily involved in the company yeah. seems to be a, a, a very big problem. I think it is. I mean, it's very easy, of course, to, to say this. Uh, and there will be a lot of uh, CEOs of um, you know major organisations who will uh, say, "Well, you don't know how difficult it is. I've got to, you know, I've got to get in right. front of a, right. the analysts. I've got to get in front of the. I've got to report to the city every quarter." You know, um, but. I think that's a cop out actually. I think there are very, very good companies who are publicly quoted companies that are led by people and have at their heart um, an ethos, a purpose that drives them, which is beyond just returning a buck to, to, for, for the next quarter. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, there is so much evidence that shows those companies who are motivated by a higher purpose than simply chasing the buck tend to be the ones who perform um, better over the long run. And that, that's been going on, or that, uh, that, that um, has been identified for many years. It started, I think, really with Jim Collins' uh, book, um, you know, Good to Great, and books Good, Good to Great and, and Built to Last, were the first ones to sort of indicate that that's what kept great companies going. So the first one, uh, I think, is, is, is wrong sense of purpose is to be focused too much on the short term financial measures. The second one uh, is, I think, more common, which is it's a bland and self-serving purpose, which is usually articulated along the lines of we aim to be the number one in you know, whatever sector, um, delivering whatever to whomever. You know, they, you, you must have, you know, must have seen these things all the time. Yeah, and they're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're bland, they're generic, and they are clearly an exercise in, in tick boxing around a purpose. And they don't engage anybody. Um, they don't really engage, and they certainly don't really direct people towards what they need to do. So I think those are common and uh absolutely un- unmotivating uh, purposes um there's another kind of purpose um and it's it's part of a story we tell in here i don't know if i can use i don't know if i can use bad language on, on the radio no but, please go for it <laughs> but it's a wonderful little story that um my colleague sean tells and we tell it in the book where he was with a uh, japanese company and uh they uh had uh they were talking about their purpose and they used a Japanese phrase with two Japanese symbols uh, around. And he saw it and he asked, well, what, is, what does that symbol mean? And they said, oh, that, that's our purpose. And he said, what is it? It says, fuck Fuji. <laughs> and that was... Right, right. So I think, you know, 
killing your competitor uh, is, you know, a, a purpose. It's, um, but it's not a particularly helpful purpose to anybody, really. No, um, no I And I think that whole that whole kind of macho set approach to business, where there's got to be a winner and there's got to be seen to be a loser. And we're in it to be the winner. We need to crush we need anyone to crush. in our way. And we need to, and, and the way that people use military metaphor and uh, talk about business as if it's a, a game of war or, or like it's a war. I mean, I find it A, disturbing, B, uh, ludicrous. Um, you know, war is a really horrible Ter- terribly serious thing and at the end of a day in a war people are killed at the end of a day in business not so yeah um, absolutely uh, so I think purposes that are, are are built around that sense of we're going to go and crush them compared to they want to be number- yeah, I don't feel they're particularly motivating or good uh, and, and the other ones are those purposes which are I would call the greenwash purposes the the the, the, the CSR on steroids type purpose um, where you know we there's a general statement of we want to help our planet or do good to the world and it's not actually round, grounded in the reality of the organization it's it's really done to make people feel that they are putting i think um a sort of green yeah i could say a green wash across the business um i call them rather false purposes if you want to avoid it it's a very simple way of av- avoiding it and that is to understand what is a good purpose? And a good purpose, very simply, connects a story about what you do that improves your customer, consumer, or client life and the world in which they live, which is congruent with what you as a business are actually capable of doing. Um, and I think that is the way to avoid going to the bad purposes, is to focus on uh, what's the value we bring to people and how do we help solve the problems in their lives that we have the legitimacy and capability to solve. So uh, one of the examples we give in the book is, um, is Nissan. Uh, and Nissan, as an automotive company, has a higher purpose around creating a zero emission, zero fatalities world. Well, zero emission is a big issue that they can deal with because what that translates into, into a customer benefit, is air quality. And that is what automotive companies mostly can do to affect and improve the quality of the world in which the customers live is air quality, which is why they are spending an awful lot of money investing in electric vehicles. Um, but the proposition that is built into that, how they're going to reach that sense of, uh, create, create that uh, zero emissions world is by offering their customers uh, innovative and exciting products that are affordable and accessible. So they're democratizing the access to technologies um, that in the past might only have been uh, in sort of more upmarket car brands. And that I think is an example of uh, an organization thinking about a purpose that they can actually do something about they can build their entire business around and is congruent with what they do and actually is relevant and appealing and uh, makes a difference to the world. And I think the way to avoid bad purposes is not to think about how to avoid them, it's to just actually concentrate on creating a really good one.